Hello everyone, Jurassic Man here, and today we are finally going to do a very special review of the new Jurassic World Dino Rivals Battle Damage Albertosaurus. I have been looking for this figure everywhere. Every Walmart in my vicinity, online, trying to get offers, trying to win bids on Ebays, everything. I even had a couple people try to help me find them. With no avail. There were some people that actually had extras, but they did not have any contacts with me after a while. Right before we were about to finalize, but out of nowhere, one random day, my mom went to Walmart. She saw something that I was looking for earlier that she saw my post. And she said, is this it? And they said, yes, yes. And for that, I thank her. As now I have... The Albertosaurus and I gotta say from all those pictures from even from those early leaks this is still a good an amazing a brilliant looking toy with awesome details and just an awesome figure itself so yeah so the Albertosaurus is the second new Tyrannosaur species in this line because in some sort of way if I did do a review on that, the uh, Proceratosaurus, even though it has Ceratosaurus in its name, it's not related to Ceratosaurus, and in fact it's more closely related to T-Rex. Ceratosaurus is more closely related to Carnotaurus than T-Rex. So you can see where the family lineage is right there. Being the second Tyrannosaur in its family, it's also probably the only medium-sized Tyrannosaur we have in this family. Because now we have a small, a medium, and a large. To compensate with all in line. So yes, now we finally have more than one Tyrannosaur in the family. And Allosaurus is not a member of the Tyrannosaur. I think it's more related to dinosaurs like Giganotosaurus. And so. But yeah, you get the point. So yeah. The Albertosaurus name really means the Alberta Lizard. Found in Alberta, Canada, this is an amazing looking dinosaur and this toy does not replicate how it is in real life, but it's still an amazing toy. So what we got here is that we got a new rendition of the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Nothing on top and the bottom, just Albertosaurus, the new rendition of the Jurassic World logo, the fiery background, the battle damage logo, and if we will go from the side, near. And to the back, you can see a nice rendition picture of the Albertosaurus. As it can show, it has dino damage, which has two actions to it. A nice looking picture of it. And of course, the bottom, we have the Draco Rex, which I already reviewed. Oh wait, never mind. That is the Battle Damage Blue, the new Battle Damage Pteranodon, and the Battle Damage Sticky Moloch. Of course, this is compatible with the game fact, and it does have a collector's card, which I'll bring out in a moment. So let's not... Wait further longer and get this guy out of his package. That is a very glorious package, I do say so for myself. Now into the scopes, you can already tell that this Albertosaurus is very finely detailed. I've seen so many pictures and people saying how amazingly detailed the Albertosaurus is, especially that head scope. As you can see, that head sculpt is jam-packed with details. Far better... Oops. Sorry about that. Far better than a lot of the dinosaur toys we had so far from the other parts of the line, I do say. Let's get this camera fixed. Alright. So yeah, the details on the upper source is really nicely made. It is also nicely stylized too, with a hint of osteoderms running down in the back. If you do not know what Osteoderms is, I really highly suggest to look it up. But a basic idea of what Osteoderms is, is that those big old bumpy scales you see on iguanas or Komodo dragons and such. But yeah, those are Osteoderms. They're big plates that go on the sides of most dinosaur species. Some well-known ones are that of the Carnotaurus, as you can see of its tail having Osteoderms on the layer of the back. However, osteoderms are only found in certain dinosaur species. However, seropods don't have a lot of osteoderms in their body. 
and especially the Tyrannosaur lineage, which is more closely related to birds, does not have osteoderms, but instead small, tiny scales similar to that of bird feet around their whole body. It has a very armor-plated top side of its body, with nice large bumps on the side of it. And something I find a bit odd is how the feet have very to little no details at all, from the from all the way up here from the uh, the ankles. It just goes back to details. That's probably the only thing that has no to very little details other than the uh, the side of the belly. But other than that, that's pretty good. The coloration on this is a little questionable, I do gotta say. For some weird reason, Mattel decided to stop uh, not even halfway through the body for paint. I would like to see someone probably do like a custom of the red going all the way down to the tail. And of course that white or beige on their belly going all the way down to the tail as well. It is odd how the Spinosaurus is the only one that I know that is fully painted from his back to his belly to even his claws. The only thing that is not painted is a mixed session of his neck. But other than that, the whole Spinosaurus is painted. Everything else has problems. A little questionable Mattel, a little questionable. But I do gotta say, at least you colored the scars right. Because if you saw in the other T-Rexes from the line, they always miss the scars. I don't know why, they, they do that apparently. So yeah, paint-wise, it has this nice gunmetal color, a nice brown-red color, I don't know what you call that. And it's like a beige color, which the whole jaw being one beige color. It's a beige plastic, basically. And the whole mouth is this nice pink, as you can see up here. It has a nice pink mouth inside. A little odd that it has that. It's a little too pink for me, but it's alright. Articulation on this guy is really great. Not as great as those of the Extreme Chomping line. But really great in my teeth myself. It has a nice articulated top. Oops. Waiting that for later. A nice articulated top is in a ball joint. You can move it side to side, up and down. It's pretty good. If it had the second articulation like the T-Rex, it would have break the sculpt on this because this head sculpt is just amazing. Jaw uh, articulation on the jaw is very limited as well. I kind of wish it goes a bit more open down, but this is all right as well. There is no uh, pivots inside the hands. Or in this case, the arms, like that of the legs, as the legs can pivot inwards and out. So I don't know why would you want that, uh, unless you have unstable ground. The arms are just on a swivel. That's it. Uh, that's basically it. The ankles have a swivel as well. As you can see, you can rotate. So that's pretty good. Both legs are good at that. And the tail... I don't know exactly if it's on a ball joint because it has some restrictions on it. But it's a little tough and I like that too. On some like that of the Spinosaurus where it had a very flimsy tail. However, its tail is pretty short, which is probably a bit of a problem everyone has. It's also very broad, I do gotta say that. For a T-Rex is very broad. Or in this case a Tyrannosaur. So you have this big old broad body. And it's a very skinny tail. It does weigh some questions when it comes to that. <laughs> but overall, I feel like this is a really good sculpt. My only problem right now is the similar thing with that of the Spinosaurus. And that is always with the tail. Come on, uh, Mattel. Yeah, I'm sure you could probably do the same thing like that with Extreme Chopping Line. Just make it snap on. Have a cover like that. The tail extending like halfway throughout the body. That would be pretty good. I mean, most tails are like that. They take up one third of the whole body, right? And a little nice touch they did is that on this leg has a scar. Because on this leg, there is no scar. And what they did is that they made this more indicated that it's a battle damage by having scars. There's also a scar in the face, as there's one right here. And there's one right here. Oh wait, I guess it's not a scar then. <laughs> That's just a sculpt. But yeah. Overall, it's pretty good. Now, for the battle damage feature, which is the selling point for these, is that not, it does not only have one battle damage, but two. 
and the inside of the belly, or in this case the stomach or the side, is rubber. It is a nice feeling rubber. It feels like a kind of like a very smooth Kennerish rubber. And it moves around in there too. It's a nice pink coloration. I don't know what it's be. I think it's the lungs. From the looks of it, it's too flat to be anything else other than the lungs I can think of. And the bones for this other battle damage piece is very nicely aligned. Especially the uh the scapula right here. Reaching all the way up here as it shows here on the muscle indication and the ribs are just nice too. Skin is nice too. It nicely covers it up. So some people do have a little trouble getting the bone piece getting back in the I seen. A little not too hard, but if you have it in sort of angle, it won't go back in all the way. But yeah, it's a very nice down damage piece. You can really do some uh, play feature with that. You know. Rawr, rawr. Although, I do have to uh, disagree with a lot of people's mind of battle damage. Being that... Uh, no, no, no. I like it how it is. You know, the sliding thing. I just don't like the choice of dinosaurs they use for this. A carnivore? Couldn't we have, like, some kind of herbivore to do it? I mean, that makes more sense, right? Carnivores eat herbivores. It's not very often you see carnivores eat other carnivores. Especially for dinosaurs, in a way. But hey, I guess that happens sometimes, too. So, yeah. What a nice figure, a nice sculpt, nice colorations, not halfway good. Uh, one bad problem, and a very cool down damage piece. I really do hope in the future Mattel makes more of these medium sized down damage figures. Because I do count as those bigger T-Rexes and the Super Colossal as a large size, as this is part of the medium range and is the only one we have so now. So yeah, now let's go to comparisons. Here's a comparison with the Albertosaurus to his larger counterpart, Rexy, the Sirajan Thrill Tyrannosaurus Rex. And as you can see, the other chomping T-Rex would have been around hip height for this guy, so it gives you a better scale on these two. Here's a comparison of the Albertosaurus with the React Attack Carnotaurus. And as you can see, by the look of it, the Carnotaurus is slightly taller. Uh, not too big, but I do gotta say if the Carnotaurus was be more scale, a little bit along the line with the, uh, let's see, uh, let's see, uh, uh, uh the, uh, Metricastosaurus. Maybe a bit lower, or maybe even the same height as the Albertosaurus. So, there's this. And, of course, there's also the other comparison with the, uh, Proceratosaurus, this only other relative. We'll get a nice picture of that later. And here's a comparison shot with the Albertosaurus, with the human figure. And, of course, the... Pachyrhinosaurus are here. Even though this is supposed to be Sinoceratops, this is clearly Pachyrhinosaurus. And these two dinosaurs are really compatible because they both lived at the same time and in the same place together. So, you can make fight scenes with the Albertosaurus and the Pachyrhinosaurus instead of two different dinosaurs from different parts of the world. So you get a nice look on that and they're really playful with each other. So there you have it everyone, the Jurassic World of Battle Damage Albertosaurus for the new 2019 line for Dino Rivals. Sadly however, there is no collector cards for this guy and I really would love to see a render of him. But for now, it is a really good figure and I really do hope we get another uh, re-release of this guy. My only good problem I could have with this figure at the moment would have to be his short tail. which. I can see why it's a bit of a problem to some people, and of course the color of the back skin. But you know what? It is a phenomenal figure, and probably one of the best figures we have early on in this 2019 lineup. Later down the road, we'll get the Brachiosaurus, and of course, the Indominus Rex. If I had to get this guy a score, I would give it a 5 out of 5. Possibly the best figure we have so far in this line, in matter of fact. You can find these guys retailed for $19.97, I think, in Walmart. They're a bit hard to find at the moment of this video's making, but I'm pretty sure lay down the line, Mattel will finally realize how high demand this figure is, and we'll probably see them as common as that of the Interruptor. And you know what? I'm okay with that, because the Interruptor was a really good figure, and this guy is a really good figure as well. So, if you want another one, or create a whole pack, or heck, you know what? This guy could even good for an Allosaurus custom. If you're into that. So yeah. This guy is a really good figure to have. So alright. 
I hope you guys liked this review. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next review.